Hello friends. Now let us discuss our next topic related to high AC voltage measurement that is electrostatic voltmeter. Let us understand the basic principle of the electrostatic voltmeter. First of all, the meaning of the electrostatic voltmeter is the electrical energy in the form of static is given to the circuit or to the unit where the voltmeter is used, that is voltmeter is placed and that does the measurement of the input voltage. The voltage in this case, which is measured by this kind of circuit is AC as well as DC. The basic principle involves the Coulomb's law, which says that the electric field is the field of forces. The electric field is a field of forces and the electric field is produced by the voltage. Whenever the voltage is available, maybe low or high, the field which is developed called electric field. And if the field force is measured, the voltage can also be measured. And for the measurement purpose, there is need to have some arrangement. Whenever a voltage is applied to a parallel plate electrode arrangement, as I said, where we have two plates connected in the network. Those plates are parallel to each other. An electric field is set up between the plates. It is possible to have uniform electric field between the plates with suitable arrangement of the plates. The field is uniform, normal to the two plates and directed towards the negative plate. Here we are going to consider few parameters like if A is the area of the plate, capital E with the electric field intensity between the plates, epsilon with the permittivity of the medium between the plates, the energy density of the electric field between the plates that can be written as the energy density is represented as WD, which is equal to one upon two epsilon into E square. Now consider a differential volume between the plates and parallel to the plates with area A. So cross-sectional area A of the plate and thickness is dx. So the energy contained, the energy contained is written as dW. So WD be the energy density and dW be the energy contained with the volume A into dx. So this dW it is equal to WD multiplied by A dx. Putting the value of WD, we get one upon two epsilon E square into A dx. Now force F between the plates. A force F between the plates is defined as the derivative of the stored electric energy along the field direction. The field direction is dx and the energy stored is dw. So dw by dx. dw is 1 upon 2 epsilon e square a into dx divided by dx. It cancels this term which gives us 1 upon 2 epsilon e square into a. Now we know that electric field E is given by voltage per distance, where V is the voltage to be measured and D be the distance of separation between the plates. Therefore, the expression for force can be written as, so F is equal to one by two epsilon E square, that is V upon D whole square or V square upon D square into capital A. Since the two plates are oppositely charged, there is always force of attraction between the plates. This force of attraction term is very, very important. And based on this only, we are going to get the measurement of AC high voltage. So this force of attraction basically decides the operation of this electrostatic voltmeter. So if the voltage is time dependent, the force developed is also time dependent. In such a case, 
the mean value of force is used to measure the voltage thus force can be written as 1 upon t as the quantity is time dependent quantity epsilon 0 to t f of t dt so as i said the function the force is time dependent quantity and therefore we have this particular equation now putting the value with the integration 0 to t f of t becomes 1 upon 2 epsilon v square upon d square into a d t so by rearranging the terms the force can be written as f is equal to f is equal to now 1 by 2 is constant epsilon into a is another constant divided by d square <laughs> divided by d square into 1 upon t integration of 0 to t and v be the supply voltage which is time dependent so you have to integrate this v so we have v square t dt so this integration of v square t dt can be written as 1 upon t epsilon a v square rms this is nothing but the root mean square value of the voltage divided by d square so therefore we can say that force is equal to 1 by 2 epsilon into a multiplied by rms value of the voltage that is v rms square divided by d square so this is what the basic principle of electrostatic voltmeter basic principle of electrostatic voltmeter so from above expression we can say that the electrostatic voltmeter measures the force on the plate by a spring or counter weight. The arrangement is such that one of the plates is rigidly fixed. We can name that fixed plate as F, whereas other is allowed, allowed to move. We are going to represent it as M. With this, electric field gets distributed or disturbed so for this reason the movable electrode is allowed to move by not more than a fraction of millimeter or millimeter to a few millimeters even for high voltages so that the change in electric field is negligibly small as the force is proportional to square of rms the meter can be used for both ac and dc voltage measurement so this is what the basic principle which we have understood for electrostatic voltmeter. Now let us understand the concept of the electrostatic voltmeter. So this electrostatic voltmeters are made with parallel plate M and M, M and F configuration using guard ring H that is to avoid corona and field fringing at the edges. An absolute voltmeter is made by a balancing B, the plate with a counterweight R and is calibrated in terms of small weight. Generally, this electrostatic voltmeters have small capacitance of 5 to 50 picofarad and high insulation resistance that is greater than 10 to the power 13 ohms. Hence, they are considered as devices with high input impedance. The accuracy for AC voltage measurement is 0.25 plus minus percent and for DC measurement it is plus minus 0.1 percent even less. It consists of parallel plate disc type electrodes M and F. M be the moving plate and F be the fixed plate and separated by a small distance. The moving electrode M is surrounded by a fixed guard ring that is H, that is to make the field uniform in the central region. In order to, in order to measure the given 
in order to measure the given voltage in order to measure the given voltage with precision the disc diameter is to be increased and the gap distance is to be made less in more versatile instruments only small movements of the moving electrodes is allowed and the movement is amplified through a optical means that arrangement is also shown in the circuit in next slide this optical means consists of lamp and a scale arrangement as used with moving coil galvanometers two air when dampers are used to reduce the vibrational tenden tendencies in the moving system and hence we have that particular system shown in the circuit so let us understand the concept of this electrostatic voltmeter let us understand the concept of this electrostatic voltmeter so this is that figure which i am talking about here we have a high voltage input here it may be ac and even maybe the dc can be given so we are understanding for ac high voltage measurement where there are few capacitor units connected in series as indicated as c there is a fixed plate which is parallel fixed plate f which is parallel to moving plate m this moving plate m is connected to the balancing unit with the weight given on this with the with uh, with balancing weight r this balancing weight r is also called as a controlling torque this complete unit is placed in a dome shaped unit and g be the guard plates which are given provided here g be the guard plates which are provided here so m is the moving plate this m and f is having a uniform electric field which is attained by the h guard rings these guard rings are also called as the guard hooks and therefore it is represented as h so this is the absolute electrostatic voltmeter arrangement so m is the mounting plate or moving disc g with the guard plate f with the fixed plate h with the guard hoops or rings b with the balance c with the capacitance divider d with the dome and r with the balancing weight now here this particular arrangement is shown in this diagram where we have a scale arrangement with the light source shown this light source falls on the mirror so small m indicates the mirror which is connected to the moving plate m and it is parallel to the fixed plate f which has a connection of high tension that is high voltage so this arrangement is called as light beam arrangement this arrangement is called as light beam arrangement so let us understand what we have in this particular case the control torque is provided by a balancing weight that is r the moving disc m forms the central core of the guard ring g which is of the same diameter as the fixed plate f so the diameter of this fixed plate and this g guard ring is same is same there is a cap provided here that is d that includes that encloses the sensitive balance beam to provide it the disturbance from the outside one arm of which carries the suspension of the moving disc the balance beam carries a mirror so that mirror arrangement is shown here this m be the mirror so this balance beam carries a mirror which reflects a beam of light so this 
light source which falls on that mirror re get reflected on the scale which is provided here. So this is that scale arrangement. So when this light source, which is shown here, falls on the mirror, falls on the mirror, reflects that beam on the scale. So the moment of this moving plate M in terms of small millimeters moves this mirror in a direction. Accordingly, the light beam which falls on that mirror get reflected, get changed, and hence accordingly that changes the reflection which falls on the scale. The moment of the disc is thereby magnified as the spacing between the two electrodes is large, the uniformity of the electric field is maintained by the guard rings H, which surrounds the space between the disc F and M. The guard rings H are maintained at a constant potential in space by a capacitance divider, ensuring a uniform spatial potential distribution. So this is what the construction and hence the working of this electrostatic voltmeter. In the working principle, the principle which is shown, which is written earlier, the force F, it is equal to one upon two epsilon A V RMS square upon D square. So D be the distance between the two plates. Now, whenever the high voltage is given to this side, so whenever a high voltage is given to this side, where the capacitors are connected in series, that develops the electric field between the two. This electrostatic field, which is present in between two parallel plates, M and F, which is distributed equally with the help of H guard rings. This electric field attracts the moving plate, which creates the force on this moving plate. So the basic principle which says that force between the electrodes of the parallel plate develops or the electric field which is present between the two pl parallel plates develops the force. And this force of attraction attracts this moving plate in downward direction. So here in light beam arrangement, that shows the moving plate get attracted on the right hand side that is towards the fixed plate. The moment of this moving plate on this side reflects light source which falls on the mirror, get amplified, which falls, get reflected on the scale. So by using this arrangement, the weight which is placed here is measured. So whatever the force which is developed here, that can do the measurement of the voltage which is applied to this system. So here we have a force, right? Then the permittivity, then the area between the two plates, which is constant and measured, and D be the gap between the two plates. So known quantities, epsilon A and D with the force measurement can do the calculation of voltage. As from this case, force is directly proportional to the voltage square. Force is directly proportional to the voltage square. So this way, so this way, this measures the value of the force and hence the voltage which is given to the system. Hope you understood the concept of electrostatic voltmeter with basic principle, construction and operation. So thank you so much. We'll meet again with our next topic for the measurement of AC high voltage, high frequency. Thank you.